From MTN News, this is Governor Greg Gianforte's 2023 State of the State. Coffin, thanks for joining us as we bring you live coverage of the State of the State, the governor's address to the people of Montana. The governor will be delivering his address in the House chambers where MTN is live. We'll show you Montana senators joining House representatives in their chambers to host the governor. They're already beginning this whole process, about to gavel in for a joint session. Uh, let's talk about some points we expect the governor to hit on tonight. Cutting red tape, low employment numbers, low unemployment numbers, excuse me, cutting taxes, fixing the state hospital, public safety. A lot of these represented in the governor's budget and legislative priorities this session. So as they're getting started, we're going to go check in on the House floor where they are already underway. We're going to toss it over for you to listen in. Voters have invested a lot of trust in them and given them considerable executive and legislative power. Inspire them to exercise this power with wisdom, integrity, courage when needed, compassion for the vulnerable, and respect, always respect, and civility towards those with opposing views. In a free society, dear God, power conferred by voters is a call to lead and a noble form of service. Each new legislature, each new state of the state introduces a new beginning. May this moment in time mark a dawn of abundant blessings for all Montanans, and may God continue to bless our beautiful state with the grace of his presence and providence. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father Beretta. Members, you may be seated. Sergeant at Arms Vance. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, the Honorable Governor of the great state of Montana, Greg Gianforte, awaits entry into the House Chamber. Sergeant at Arms Vance, will you please ask, admit Governor Gianforte into the House Chamber. Ladies and gentlemen, I have the high honor and great privilege now to present to you and the people of Montana, the Governor of the state of Montana and the Honorable Greg Gianforte. Lieutenant Governor, Mr. President, Mr. Speaker, members of the 68th Legislature, fellow statewide officials, tribal leaders, members of the judiciary, members of our cabinet, First Lady of Montana, my dear wife Susan, and finally my fellow Montanans. I really appreciate you giving me a standing ovation through the whole thing, but you can be seated if you want. <laughs> My fellow Montanans, serving you, the people of Montana, as your 25th governor is the greatest honor of my life. 
Thank you for the confidence you've placed in me. In my last State of the State, I told Montanans we owe it to them to be bold as we lead the Montana comeback. We laid out an ambitious plan with our sights set on building a place where more Montanans can realize the American dream, working hard, earning a good living, and raising their family. I'm proud to report we are succeeding in that mission. But we know our journey is far from over. We still face challenges. But with each challenge comes an opportunity, an opportunity to grow together and to grow stronger. For too long, Montana hasn't been living up to our full outstanding potential. Our biggest exports have been beef, grain, and tragically, our kids and grandkids. We've seen jobs and opportunities grow in other states, and they haven't grown here. As a result, our kids and grandkids have left the place they love and the people they love for better jobs, higher pay, and greater opportunities elsewhere. Too many choose to leave, but they shouldn't have to face that choice. Over the past two years, we've made it easier for Montanans to stay, and some have come back home. I meet with them and other inspiring Montanans when I'm on the road. Each year, I visit all 56 counties. It's a priority for me. Getting out of the hell in a bubble and sitting down with Montanans is the only way I know how to do this job. Montanans want greater opportunity, good paying jobs, tax relief, the best education possible for their kids, affordable, accessible, high quality health care, safe communities, attainable housing, stronger families, and responsible, effective government. I share their priorities, and together we must deliver on them. Montanans are counting on us. Let's get to it. Our key focus has always been and remains creating greater opportunity for more Montanans and protecting the Montana way of life. Together, we're opening doors of greater opportunity so more folks can prosper and achieve the American dream. We're unleashing the engine of economic growth, business development, and job creation that for too long has sputtered. In 2021, Montana's economy grew at the seventh fastest pace in America. I'm proud of that. We did that together. <laughs> Thanks to the hard work of Montanans, we saw record business creation in 2021 and again in 2022. Together, with these hardworking Montanans, we created more than 31,000 new jobs in the state just in the last two years. That's 31,000 jobs. That's making a difference in so many lives. Never before have this many be jobs been created in any two-year period in the state's history. We've hit record low unemployment. Working with the legislature in 2021, I'm proud also that we delivered one of the largest tax cuts in Montana's history. We reformed and simplified our tax code to help small businesses, family farms, and ranches thrive again. And as a result, more Montanans are working today than ever before in our history. Friends, the state of our state is strong, and it is much stronger than it was two years ago.
As much as our tax cuts, cuts and reforms help hardworking Montanans, we recognize our state's regulatory scheme is a wet blanket on job creation and business development. That's why on my second day in office, I created the Red Tape Relief Task Force. Led by Lieutenant Governor Juris, they've left no stone unturned. And ladies and gentlemen, I can tell you, the Lieutenant Governor doesn't cut ribbons, she cuts red tape. <laughs> Thank you, Lieutenant Governor. And Lieutenant Governor, I just want to say thank you for your partnership in leading the Montana comeback. Thank you. The results of the Lieutenant Governor's work are clear. Right now, there are more than 160 red tape relief bills. Many have already house, passed the House or the Senate. Our to our legislative partners, thank you for helping more Montanans prosper by removing unnecessary, burdensome regulations. Thank you. Montanans, Montanans have spoken loud and clear. They want a government that works for them, not the other way around. That's why serving our customers, the people of, our, of Montana, is our top priority. We're putting customer service first and changing the way state government does business. We're listening to our bosses the people of Montana. We're fixing what doesn't work. We're modernizing state government. We're streamlining permitting. As an example, in, January, in uh, 2020, the Department of Environmental Quality was receiving a record number of requests for subdivision permits. And the requests kept coming. The department faced a backlog of nearly 500 overdue subdivision permits. This prevented builders and developers from doing their job. So Director Chris Dorrington quickly changed the way DEQ operated. And in just months, they eliminated the backlog entirely. Subdivision permits are now being issued on time. And more homes are being built in Montana as a result. Thank you, Director Dorrington. We're also being better stewards of taxpayer dollars, making government more efficient. The Department of Labor and Industry developed a new, improved unemployment benefit system. This new system saved taxpayers over $35 million and can now better serve those who have lost a job. The Department of Administration renegotiated our state health plan. That renegotiation is saving taxpayers $28 million per year while improving benefits. And with our historic surplus, we're going to make Montana debt free in 23. With your help, we'll pay off all the general obligation debt and we'll save taxpayers $40 million over the next two years. I urge you to make Montana debt free in 23 and save Montanans that $40 million. Please get the bill to my desk. These are real efficiencies, real improvements, real savings, all to better serve the people of Montana. As we leave Montana's comeback, we're creating an environment where businesses can thrive, create more good-paying jobs, 
and increase opportunities for all Montanans. And don't just take it from me. Take it from companies like Hyundai that decided to come to Montana and invest in our people, creating 50 Montana jobs. Or Next Era Energy, supporting our all of the above energy strategy and creating 300 Montana jobs. Or Tonix Pharmaceuticals, adding to a growing hotspot of cutting edge innovation in the Bitterroot and in the process created 120 high paying Montana jobs. All told, over the last two years, 15 businesses have relocated to Montana and are creating more than 900 good paying Montana jobs. These companies see Montana's clear value. They see Montanans unparalleled work ethic and our pro-business, pro-jobs policies. There's no doubt about it, Montana is open for business. We've made Montana more attractive to innovative job creators and they're investing in our state and our people. But we have a long way to go and just for the record, friends, we're just getting started. We're going to keep making Montana a sanctuary for freedom and free enterprise. Together, we will make Montana an even better place to live, work, raise a family, and pursue the American dream. Because that's what Montana sent all of us here to do, to focus on their priorities. As I meet with Montanans in every corner of our state, I hear loud and clear that tax relief is a priority. That's why we're cutting the taxes again this session. Working with the legis legislature, we're moving forward the largest tax cut in Montana state history. With inflation taking a bite out of every Montana family budget, from gas to groceries, providing meaningful tax relief is critical. That's, for the people of Montana, that's why we're going to cut your taxes by over a billion dollars. All of the tax proposals are rooted in a simple philosophy. Hardworking Montanans should keep more of what they earn because ultimately it's not the government's money. It's the money of hardworking Montanans who earn it. That's why we're going to put money back in Montanans' pockets through immediate rebates and permanent long-term tax relief. The fact of the matter is Montanans overpaid. We need to give it back. Yeah. Our plan, our plan, the one we're working on together, delivers Montanans the largest income tax cut ever. Our plan provides relief to Montana taxpayers at every income level. Because even after our historic cut in 2021, we still have the highest income tax rate in the Rocky Mountain West and one of the highest in the nation. It's a drag on our economy, a disincentive for job creation, and a burden on Montana families. Other states understood this, and they are cutting their income tax rates. To stay competitive, we must do the same. We must permanently cut the tax rate most Montanans pay and encourage Montanans to get back in the workforce. As I travel the state, I see help wanted signs on every Main Street. It's why we proudly led as the first state in the nation to end federal supplemental unemployment benefits in 2021.
And it's why we're expanding the earned income tax credit to help lower income working Montanans incentivize work and build a stronger workforce. I want to take a minute to, center, to thank Senator Becky Beard, who introduced legislation to cut income tax uh, rates for Montana taxpayers at every single income level. Where is Becky? Thank you, Becky. And I want to thank Representative Tom Welch for bringing legislation to provide Montana homeowners with meaningful property tax relief. Thank you, Tom. And while the state receives only a small fraction of property taxes, we believe Montanans deserve substantial property tax relief. Like a retired couple in the Flathead, who because they can't afford their rising property taxes, are thinking about selling their home that they raised their kids in, we must provide them with significant property tax relief so they can stay in their home and in their community. We must also make it easier for small business owners, family farms, and family ranchers to thrive by further reforming the business equipment tax. For too long, owning the equipment needed to operate has come with a heavy, unnecessary tax burden. That's why we tripled the business equipment tax exemption in 2021. And it's why we're working with the legislature this year to raise the business equipment tax exemption to $1 million for every single small business in the state of Montana. <laughs> Taken together, these two changes will eliminate more than 5,000 small businesses from having to even pay business equipment tax. I want to thank Representative Josh Kazmaier for leading this charge in 2021 and then leading the charge again here in the 2023 session. Where's Josh? Thank you. Working together, we're providing the largest tax cut in state history, creating greater opportunities for Montanans to prosper, thrive, and achieve the American dream. We must also ensure that our kids receive the best education possible. Too often, throughout our country, we've seen education bureaucrats fighting to keep parents out of their kids' education. Let's be clear, government should never stand between parents and their kids' education. Let's empower Montana parents to choose what's best for their family and their kids. Let's protect parental rights. I urge you to send me Majority Leader Sue Vinton's bill that ensures students 
and parents are put first in education. Thank you for carrying that, Sue. Every parent knows that each child is unique. Let's ensure each child's education best meets his or her individual needs. Let's support individualized learning, allowing students to progress at their own pace regardless of age or class. Let's pass the Individualized Education Act sponsored by Senator Shannon O'Brien. Thank you, Shannon. Let's also support work-based learning, allowing students to get on-the-job experience and apply that experience to their high school graduation requirements. Friends, we can't continue doing the same thing over and over again and expect different results. We need to bring innovation back to education. We need fresh, new thinking and bold leaders to deliver the best education possible for our kids. Ron Slinger, the president of Miles Community College, is doing that and he's here with our, us tonight. Miles Community College is equipping Montanans with the skills they need to thrive in good paying, in demand careers, from truck drivers to meat cutters to certified nursing assistants. The college has also developed partnerships with the private sector, including Stockman Bank and Sydney Health Center to create business-specific micro-credentials. Miles Community College is breaking the traditional mold. They're transforming how education is delivered. They're thinking outside the box, not confining themselves or their students to the limits of their college's brick and mortar. And under Ron's leadership, they're delivering results. Because of their innovation, Miles Community College full-time enrollment has grown at three times the rate of the entire Montana University system just in the last year. Ron, would you please stand up? Ron, thank you for your innovative work on behalf of Montana students. My challenge tonight to education leaders at every college, at every university, and every school district in the state, follow Ron's lead. Be innovative. Be transformative. Develop partnerships with the private sector. Don't be constrained by brick and mortar. And improve educational opportunities for all Montana students. We can also transform how we deliver traditional K through 12 education. Imagine a student who lives in rural Montana. She excels at math. But her school doesn't offer advanced calculus or other STEM courses. Wouldn't she benefit from taking calculus online? Geographic boundaries are no longer a constraint. We must modernize our way of thinking about education beyond traditional geographic boundaries. We can do that through Representative Lou Jones's bill to transform the Montana Digital Academy. I ask you to pass that bill and get it to my desk. <laughs> the, 
let's also double the cap on the Big Sky Scholarship to expand parental choice in K through 12 education. Let's do all this, and let's also take better care of those who help our kids reach their full potential, our Montana teachers. Teaching is a calling. My mom was a high school math teacher, and now my daughter is teaching high school math. For too long, teachers who answer the call and start their careers haven't earned enough. That's why we enacted the TEACH Act in 2021, to provide incentives to school districts to increase starting teacher pay. And it's working. In its first year, the TEACH Act helped nearly 500 new teachers here in Montana. Kylie Urie is one of those young teachers, and she's with us tonight. Kylie is in her second year at Harlem High School, where she teaches agriculture and coaches cheerleading. She told me she found her life's calling in teaching. Her husband, Nathan teaches agriculture and coaches wrestling at Turner Public School. They knew they wanted to start their careers teaching ag in rural Montana, but it didn't add up financially with the state's low starting teacher pay. Thankfully, the TEACH Act made a big difference. Kylie told me the boost from the TEACH Act was her deciding factor in moving to Harlem to teach. Thanks to the TEACH Act, we have Kylie and Nathan, two new young teachers educating our students. They're making our future a little brighter every day. Kylie and Nathan, thank you for your dedication to our kids and Montana's future. Please stand up. Friends, a four-year college degree is not the best option for everyone. Many new, good-paying jobs require specialized skills, skills developed through apprenticeship. When we took office two years ago, government regulations blocked access to apprenticeships. So we modernized our apprenticeship system in Montana, and in the process, we quadrupled the number of apprenticeship slots. <laughs> and we're seeing results. In 2022, Montana added more than 1,000 apprenticeships and more new employer sponsorships to our registered apprenticeship program. We have more apprentices now than ever before. Williams Plumbing in Bozeman is one of our employer sponsors. And Quinn Williams, the company president, and Cooper Austin, an employee with Williams Plumbing, are here with us tonight. Quinn told me, before our reform, the company had 35 available apprenticeship positions. With the help of our reform, Williams Plumbing created nearly 200 apprenticeship positions for hardworking Montanans like Cooper, who earned his apprenticeship as a direct result of our regulatory change. After Cooper graduated from high school, he tried college but realized that wasn't the right path for him. He enlisted in the Marines, was stationed in California and Missouri as he served, and remains active in the reserves in Billings. Cooper, thank you for your service to our state and nation.
Cooper was looking for a good paying career and a close family friend suggested he find one in the trades. And that's how he ended up at Williams Plumbing. Cooper tells me that he's learned a lot as an apprentice and he loves the work. Cooper and Quinn, thank you for making Montana a better place. Now more than ever, Montana needs plumbers and carpenters, electricians, welders, masons, and machinists. Now more than ever, Montana needs a highly skilled workforce, which is why we created the Montana Trades Education Credit in 2021. As we anticipated, Montana employers are taking advantage of the credit to upskill their workforce. And this year, our budget nearly doubles the Montana Trades Education Credit, boosting this successful program that builds the skills of hardworking Montanans. As much as we need to open opportunities for trades education, we also need to grow our health care workforce. Let's tear down the boundaries, the barriers for health care professionals to practice in Montana. Send Representative Amy Regeer's bill to join the APRN compact to my desk, as well as Representative Bill Mercer's that improves professional and occupational licensing so we can staff our hospitals and clinics. Taken together, these measures will build a more robust provider network in Montana and ultimately increase Montanans' access to health care. In 2021, we brought greater competition to the marketplace and more choice to consumers by authorizing direct patient care agreements. With unanimous bipartisan support, we expanded telehealth increasing access to high quality care to all corners of the state. Let's build on this progress here in this session together. If we want nurses, law enforcement officers, and teachers to live in the communities they serve, we must address the shortage of affordable, attainable housing as well. Homeownership is foundational to the American dream, but home ownership has become harder to achieve in the last decade. Hardworking Montanans should be able to live in the communities where they work, and grandparents should be able to live closer to their kids and grandkids. That's why last year I brought together a diverse bipartisan housing task force. I want to thank Senator Greg Hertz, Senator Ellie Boldman, Representative Sue Vinton, former Representative Danny Tenenbaum, agency directors, and stakeholders for their leadership. You did a great job. Thank you. I made their mission clear help make owning or renting a home an affordable reality again for more Montanans. They delivered many strategies to increase the supply of affordable, attainable housing. As an example, we adopted one of the task force's strategies in our budget, the HOMES program, or Home Ownership Means Economic Security. The HOME program invests $200 million to expand water and sewer infrastructure and ultimately expand housing opportunities. I want to thank Representative Mike Hopkins and Senator Forrest Mandeville for leading that effort. Thank you, gentlemen. I 
I ask you to pass the HOMES program. Get it to my desk so we can increase the supply of housing and get more Montanans into a home of their own. To increase the supply of affordable, attainable housing, we also need to have infrastructure in place. It's why, in addition to the historic investments in water and sewer, we've proposed an additional $100 million to repair our roads and bridges. And like access to water and sewer systems, as well as safer roads and bridges, Montanans' access to broadband is essential in the 21st century. Lack of access to reliable broadband limits Montanans' access to educational opportunities, health care, and career opportunities. That's why we made the largest investment ever in broadband infrastructure, which will bring reliable broadband to 62,000 Montana homes that are not currently served. We have to get this done. As we create better opportunities for Montanans, we must also protect our way of life. Above all, that means protecting life. Our Declaration of Independence states, we are endowed by our Creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. But without life, there can be no liberty and no pursuit of happiness. All life is precious and must be protected. <laughs> Last session, we passed common sense pro-life bills, some of which are now tied up in the courts. But our commitment to doing what's right for unborn babies will never waver. As we stand firm for life, we must also ensure that Montana kids from unborn babies to teenagers have an opportunity to reach their full God-given potential. Our kids and Montana's future depend on strong families and we must help them prosper. But inflation, rising prices and increasing childcare costs continue to be a heavy burden for working families with young kids. To support them, we're proposing a $1,200 child tax credit for kids under six. Folks, $1,200 is meaningful for these young families. We need to get this done. It'll make a real difference for growing families raising their kids here in Montana. Representative Josh Kassmeyer is carrying the bill to provide this assistance for Montana families. Thank you, Josh. And speaking of childcare, let's make it more accessible and more affordable. For too long, working families have faced a shortage. This problem was only made worse by the pandemic here and throughout the entire country. It's why we've invested over $100 million to help stabilize childcare here in Montana. It's also why we're eliminating unnecessary barriers to childcare so we can better serve kids provide them with a foundation for a better future. We must also make it easier for Montanans to open their happy, loving, healthy homes to kids. Every child deserves a home where they can reach their full potential.
To get more children into permanent loving homes, we're proposing an adoption tax credit of $5,000. If you adopt a kid from our foster care system, that amount bumps to $7,500. We heard inspiring testimony just yesterday from adoptive families who opened their homes and created a brighter future for their adopted children. I appreciate Representative Courtney Sprunger, who's leading this effort. Thank you, Courtney. And I'm thankful for groups working each day to get every child into a permanent, loving home. Groups like ChildBridge, launched by the late Steve Bryan and his wife Mary, ChildBridge advocates for abused and neglected children and helps foster children find homes filled with love and support. Because of Steve's vision, Thousands of Montana children have a bright future in a loving family. What started as a local organization in Big Fork, Child Bridge is now involved, and catch this, in nearly two-thirds of all non-kinship placements throughout Montana. This is the power of the public sector working together with the private sector. Child Bridges Executive Director Jenna Taylor is with us here tonight. Jenna, on behalf of a grateful state, thank you. And thank you to the entire Child Bridge team. You provide hope for generations of children. Jenna, please stand up. To continue building bridges among Montana's public, nonprofit, and private sectors, under my direction, the Department of Health and Human Services has launched the Office of Faith and Community Based Services. This office is helping bring people together to build better outcomes for families and children here in Montana. As we know too well, drug addiction and violent crime threaten our families, our communities, and our very Montana way of life. I heard it almost in almost every community throughout our state, including the public safety roundtables I did this last year. With chemicals larging, largely coming from China, Mexican drug cartels mass produce fentanyl, then they bring it into our country, mostly over the southern border. This fentanyl crisis is a direct consequence of our nation's insecure and porous border. So tonight, I have a message for President Biden and the members of Congress. Secure our southern border now. Stop neglecting it, secure the border. The safety of our communities, our families, and our people depend on it. Crime and addiction too often go hand in hand with tragic results. Addiction and substance use tear families apart, too often leaving family members grieving the loss of a loved one. Addressing crime and addiction effectively will take partnerships and investments. To hold criminals accountable, we propose to invest $200 million to repair and expand capacity at the state prison in Deer Lodge. I want to take a minute to thank Representative Mike Hopkins and Representative John Fitzpatrick for leading this effort. Thank you, gentlemen.
To make our community safer, I ask you to pass that funding and get it to my desk. Working with the Attorney General, we also propose investing in law enforcement. Our budget funds 16 new highway patrol troopers and criminal investigators. We also propose funding six new prosecutors at the Montana Department of Justice. Taken together, they will combat the scourge of drug trafficking, human trafficking, violent crime, and crimes against our children. The brave men and women of law enforcement put their lives on the line each and every day. They deserve our support. And I speak for all Montanans. We see you, we appreciate you, and we will always back the blue. And while we crack down on criminals peddling dangerous drugs, we're also focused on expanding access to treatment and recovery for Montanans struggling with addiction. The ANGEL initiative is one way we're doing that. Launched by our administration, the ANGEL initiative allows folks struggling with addiction to visit any participating law enforcement office and get connected with treatment. I'm proud to have Cascade County Sheriff Jesse Slaughter with us here tonight. Sheriff Slaughter is dedicated to making our community safer. He was also the first Angel Initiative partner in the state of Montana. Sheriff, please stand and be recognized. Thank you, Sheriff Slaughter. We're proud to have more than 20 sheriffs throughout the state partnering with us on the ANGEL initiative. We'll keep adding more, but our work doesn't stop there. In January 2021, we introduced the HEART Fund. It funds a full continuum of substance abuse prevention and treatment programs in communities across the state. The Heart Fund helps people regain their health, rebuild their lives, and become vibrant members of their local community. To be clear, it's not bigger government. It's a community grant program. These funds go to nonprofits and NGOs that are on the ground working in the communities. And I'm proud that our budget for Montana families expands on our historic progress boosting the Heart Fund by 50%. Our budget also permanently funds eight proven effective drug courts throughout our state that are losing federal funding. Instead of turning our backs on those struggling with addiction, we're investing in hope and opportunity as they get clean, sober, and healthy. We also have an obligation to take care of the most vulnerable amongst us. After decades of previous administrations applying Band-Aids and kicking the can down the road, we propose a generational investment in behavioral health. With it, we'll repair the state hospital in Warm Springs. We'll improve patient services. And we'll better secure the safety of patients and providers. We'll also support expanded community-based behavioral health clinics. Friends, it's time to stop kicking the can down the road. Send that budget item to my desk. I appreciate the leadership of Representative Bob Keenan, Representative Ed Staffman, 
Representative Mary Caffaro, Senator John Esp, and the interim committee that worked with Director Brereton. Thank you for your service to the state. We also continue to face the heartbreaking crisis of missing and murdered indigenous persons. And this is an all hands on deck moment. I want to recognize Representative Sharon Stewart Paraguay for giving a voice to the voiceless, for continuing to carry the torch that lights our way. Tonight I ask us all, ask you all, to send her bill to my desk so that I can sign it. Representative, thank you for your work. Part of our Montana way of life is defined by our rich outdoor heritage and vast public lands. We must protect them for the generations that will follow us. Active management will protect our forests. When a forest is managed properly, we have less severe wildfires, more recreational opportunities, more wildlife habitat, and more jobs. In 2021, we set an ambitious forestry target to match the urgency of the forest health crisis that we face. Thanks to the leadership of Director Amanda Castor and the hard work of the Department of Natural Resources and Conservation, we more than doubled the number of acres treated in, the Mon in Montana in one year. Our budget proposes $10 million per year to expand the scope of active forest management so that we have fewer wildfires in the future. For the well-being of our people, their homes, their property, and their livelihoods, I urge you to pass our active forest management proposal. As we better manage our lands, we're also increasing access to them. Take our work in the big snowies. The state purchased nearly 5,700 acres in the area, providing access to over 100,000 acres of state and federal land. This conservation victory created this big snowy mountains wildlife management area. Not only does this land offer exceptional hunting with excellent habitat and access to the big snowy's elk herd, but it will also remain open for cattle grazing. Our state has a vested interest in seeing land conserved for wildlife while also keeping ranchers on the landscape. They were the first stewards. Production ag and conservation are not mutually exclusive. We married those two interests in this agreement and achieved a win-win for Montana, offering a great example of what we can accomplish together. It's a testament to the fact that we're best when we're working together. Let's keep that in mind as we work through this legislative session and in the years to come. Let's remember that there's much much more that brings us together than separates us. Let's continue finding common ground and delivering results for the people of Montana. That's what they sent us here to do. Ultimately, we all want the same thing, to open the doors of greater opportunity so more Montanans can thrive, prosper, and achieve the American dream. Let's work every day to make that a reality. Because every day, Montanans work hard to realize the American dream. To earn a decent living, to own a home, to raise a family, to contribute to their communities, and to retire comfortably. 
to leave their kids and grandkids a better life than they had. While the American dream might be fleeting in some states, it's alive and well here in Montana because we embrace the freedoms that are foundational to who we are as Americans. We support, we support all those who want a better life and are willing to work for it. We stand with parents doing everything they can do to give their kids a better life. We celebrate our shared values of hard work, commitment to family, freedom, and love of country. We embrace the fundamental idea that the American dream is a sacred one. And together, we will always defend it. Friends, our best days are ahead of us. And the better, brighter future we're building together, one will leave our kids and grandkids. That's what inspires me every day. Thank you. God bless you. God bless America, and God bless the great state of Montana. And that was the governor's state of the state in front of the 68th legislative session. We heard him go over a lot of ground, covered a lot of points, uh, from his Montana comeback plan, he was discussing cutting red tape, uh, his budget proposals of tax cuts for Montanans. We heard him talk about forestry, education, agriculture, the MMIP crisis. Uh, we heard him talk about all sorts of varied topics. He spent a lot of time on education and trades, job creation, again touching on those historic unemployment numbers his office just announced and released earlier this week. So following this address, the Democrats are getting ready to give their response. We have a reporter there, and we'll have a lot of that coverage on your 10 p.m. news. Join us tonight here on MTN. Have a great evening, and see you at 10.